Praise the Lord. It's always a great day to live. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty precious name of Jesus, receive all the honor, pleasure, and glory by the working of your Holy Spirit. And let everyone that will view and listen to this program be mightily blessed for your mercy and your grace is at work freely in the life of every one of us. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We believe in divine trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And among the three, the Holy Spirit is sometimes neglected and not respected. So I will talk on this series about a personal knowledge of who the Holy Spirit is and he too like the Father and the Son is a person so, so the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit almost 160 times it is recorded in the Bible that he made many great works. We will not be discussing those recorded times of his great work, but we shall center and focus on the person of the Holy Spirit. And the title of the first message of the series the great power at work in us the great power that is at work in us so in Ephesians 1 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power so the exceeding greatness is coming to us word, including all of us. And it is moving because there is a mighty power at work. Exceeding greatness and his mighty power. So in this alone, we can understand that it is not us, it is not me, it's the power, the greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power. And the power will meet the power that is in me and in you as well. So that exceeding great power from the Lord from God is coming to meet the power that is at work in us. So both power will meet and it will do mighty work. So the power, the mighty power that is working in us, inside us, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. In John 14, 26. But the comporter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. 
So the mighty power that is working in me, glory, this mighty power working in me is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is doing the teaching. So the Holy Spirit is teaching me. And the Holy Spirit is bringing all things that Jesus taught into my remembrance as well as it is in the remembrance of those disciples that was with Jesus at the time. So it is good to always remember the power, the exceeding great power, and the power, the mighty power that is at work. It will meet its other. Praise God. So it is none of myself whatsoever. I am able to preach. It's not me. But it is the power that is at work in me. So without that power, I cannot do anything. I will not amount to anything without the Holy Spirit. So both power from the Father and the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, it will meet each other. And the recipient of that explosiveness of that meeting, it will take effect first in my body as well as in your body. There will be glorious effect of that two powers that met each other inside us. So the Holy Spirit is so important. And let us end that ignorance. Let us end in our life that neglect and that giving importance and respect to the Holy Spirit. To understand the importance of the Holy Spirit, let us go to Luke 24, verse 49, before the coming of the Holy Spirit. He will come only if Jesus ascended to heaven. As long as Jesus is still on the earth, the Holy Spirit cannot, cannot come. It must be Jesus ascending to heaven so that the Holy Spirit will descend from heaven. So again, the Holy, Jesus ascending to heaven, the Holy Spirit descending from heaven. From earth to heaven, from heaven to earth. Oh, what a very beautiful truth that has been fulfilled. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Because the, his disciples... Good for them because Jesus walked with them, fellowship with them physically and personally. But Jesus will ascend to heaven so it is necessary for the disciples to have a person with the same power as he if he is sin physically, the one that will come is invisible. That is why many do not respect the person of the Holy Spirit because of his invisibility. 
Jesus was respected by the disciples because they can see him face to face. But the Holy Spirit is invisible. And the Holy Spirit is the power from on high. Until you be endued with power from on high. Because the disciples, by themselves, uh, they cannot amount to anything. And they cannot do any. Any miracle or any extraordinary thing in their life. So they need the power from on high. So this exceeding greatness of the power from on high and this mighty power at work in us. Hallelujah. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So the main purpose of that power and the Holy Ghost is the one that brought that power. So when the Holy Ghost is in the disciples, they receive power and that power is for witnessing. So that power is the ability to make witness. And they will receive the Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost personally will be received by them in Jerusalem. That is the first Pentecost. And they shall be witnesses. So that power... The power of the Spirit, the Spirit of power, the Spirit of love, and the Spirit of sound mind. So what the Holy Spirit brings to His disciples is boldness, love. Because when a person is in love, he don't Think much of himself. When a person is in love, he will always think about whom he loves. So, the purpose of the love of the Spirit is for everyone who receives the Holy Spirit to see first the Father and the Son and to see people who need Jesus Christ. So the receiving of the power means that there will be a change in the life of someone who will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. After they were baptized, after they received the Holy Spirit, before the disciples, they are all cowards. Because at the time that Jesus was crucified in the cross, where, where was the disciples? You cannot find them because they are so afraid. But when they were filled, when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, nobody can stop them. Because that power of the Holy Spirit overflows and control their life. And the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life make them remember all the teaching of Jesus. The necessity of the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life. I need the Holy Spirit every day. It is not enough to receive. It is to increase His work in us every day. As long as we are self-centered, as long as we are afraid and coward, that reflects 
that the Holy Spirit is not yet in complete uh, control. That shows that we are not totally surrendered to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if we are truly controlled by the Spirit, if we are ruled by the Spirit, if we are led by the Spirit, we will be so bold, so courageous, and unafraid. We shall witness for Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit will be the one doing it through us. But you shall receive, hallelujah, power. The exceeding greatness of the power from on high and the exceeding mighty power at work in me, in us. Once again, I want to repeat, reiterate, it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. We cannot understand the word unless the Holy Spirit is in us, in you, and in me. We cannot do the ministry unless the Spirit resides in us. Because the requirement of the Father is for people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we cannot fully worship the Father if there will be an absence of truths. So when a person is filled with the Spirit, he will love the Word. He will devour the pages of the Bible. So it is not enough knowing that you have the Holy Spirit. If indeed the Holy Spirit is in you, you will read your Bible every day. You will memorize scriptural verses. If indeed, if truly, the Holy Spirit is in you. And then you will not be shy to testify the goodness of Jesus. You have to prove that the Holy Spirit indeed is in control and in rulership and in leadership because as many as are led by the Spirit. So rulership, leadership. He will be the one to lead us and He will be the one to Instruct us every day. And our life will be fruitful because of our direct relationship with the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 3 to 6, I want us to know how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work in unison their work complement its other it never goes against any one of them wherefore I gave you the un to understand that no man is speaking by the spirit of God call it Jesus a curse and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost so if you are controlled, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you are led by the Spirit, you can say that Jesus is the Lord. And Jesus is the Lord is not by just mouthing it. No. When I speak that Jesus is the Lord, He is Lord all over my life. When I say that Jesus is the Lord of my life, I am fully submitted to Him. And He is the governor of my life. That is the Lordship of Jesus. Because He is Lord and I am His servant. He is my master and I am His slave. He is the firstborn and I am the younger one. And Jesus and me and you and us have the same father. So, 
If the Holy Spirit is in us, then our life is totally submitted, fully yielded, and totally surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. When Jesus is Lord of one's life, that person's life has no goal of his own. That person's life has no plan of his own. So when Jesus is the Lord of a person's life, it is the plan of God that he will rever. And it is the goal of God. It is the dream of God. So it's not me anymore. It's not you supposed to be. It has to be the Lord. Who will call the shots. Who will be on the lead. He is in front and we are at his back. We are following him. When we say that we are following Jesus then he is ahead of us. So it's only the Holy Spirit that can make our honest and sincere and genuine and pure claim that Jesus is the Lord of my life. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that will attest that I am truly is speaking from a heart that is filled with truths. And there will be power when I speak that Jesus is the Lord. It is so powerful. And in verse 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So the Holy Spirit it is gift givers he is give, give, giver so he always give gifts and the gifts the word diversities are so many gifts and if we will discuss it it will take us much time but we will not at this moment discuss all the numerous and many gifts that the Spirit will give. Then in verse 5, and there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. Administrations here means uh, serving or ministry. There are differences of ministries but the same Lord. So meaning that we will be doing the ministry, we will be doing the service for the Lord. So if he is Lord, then we are his servants. If he is master, then we are his slave. Though we are his friend. When it comes and it pertains to truth, we are friends of Jesus. And in verse 6, And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. The word operations is also the same as works. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So if we will look at this, the Father is in verse 6, and his reference to him as Father is God. And the Son is the Lord in verse 5. And the Holy Spirit is referred to in verse 3 and 4. So, with the Father and by His Spirit, I can serve Jesus by means of the gifts, the talents, and it is the Holy Spirit who will make that gifts effectively. 
effectively work first in me, then through me to the glory of God. So, knowing these truths, we will be humble to always acknowledge Him. In every success that we might gain, our joy will always be in exclaiming that it is the power of the Holy Spirit. For the glory of the Father and for the honor of the Son. So self is eliminated. I'm able to follow through the ministry not because of any quality of talents or whatsoever or intelligence. No. I will not look at on those human strength and human intelligence. It is not the one that make me true and able to perform what he has instructed and commanded me to do. It is only by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's only by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost work in unity. And that work is for the Father to receive the glory and the honor. And it is the honor of Jesus. And it is the pleasure of the Holy Spirit. The Father received the, go uh, the glory and Jesus received the honor and the Holy Spirit do the pleasure. So it is pleasurable to the Holy Spirit to bring glory to the Father. Because when He speaks, He will not speak for Himself. He will speak what Jesus will tell Him to speak. When Jesus is on earth as a man, He keeps on repeating to His disciples, I cannot say of anything unless I heard it from my father. And I cannot do anything unless I see it done by my father. Whatsoever my father does, I, um, I will do and I am doing. Whatever the fathers tell me, then I will speak of the father's instruction to me. So it shows... The relationship of the father and the son. There is humility and meekness in the part of the son. And the Holy Spirit, like the son, is humble and meek as well. Because he will never gain attention. And he will never do his work to receive prominence. The Holy Spirit silently will perform his work so that the glory will be to the Father and the honor will be to the Son and it is his pleasure to do so. So when the Spirit is in us and is in control of us, then we shall glorify the Father and honor the Son and we will experience the pleasure of serving Jesus, the pleasure of giving glory to the Father. So we shall not faint, we shall not grow weary, and we shall not grow tired. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit that is freely working the work that the Father requires. Jesus himself said, nobody can go to me except approved and allowed by my Father. And no person can go to the Father except through me. And no one shall ever know these truths unless the Holy Spirit is in them. They will not accept the truths because of the absence of the Holy Spirit in their life. 
So to receive the truths, we need to have the mighty power of the Holy Spirit in us. Again, I repeat and remind you once again, the power, the exceeding, hallelujah, the exceeding greatness of the power from on high and the mighty power that is at work in us, it's the Holy Spirit. I cannot do anything if not for the Holy Spirit doing it through me. It's the Holy Spirit, none of me. So I respect and love the person of the Holy Spirit. Because it is only Him who always reminds me of the truth and of the teaching of Jesus Christ. And in John 15, 26, John 15, 26, but when the comporter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. So what will be the pleasurable work of the Holy Spirit? To comport, to bring truths, and to testify of Jesus, to testify about Jesus. So it is the Holy Spirit that is testifying to my spirit that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the only Savior, that Jesus is King of Kings, that Jesus is Lord of Lords, that Jesus is the only way, that Jesus is the only truth, that Jesus is the only life. So it is the testimony of the Holy Spirit. That is why I believe what the Word of God says about Jesus. I believe because the Holy Spirit is in me and He is the one believing through me. So if this will be your life as it is in the life of the apostles, of the people who believe the teaching of the apostles, they don't desire that any praise from men will be accorded to them. No, they are not after the praises of men. And even Paul said that I do not speak in the wisdom of myself. I speak. I speak by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So Paul that he who is so bright, never claim that it is his brightness, his intelligence, his experience that made him successful. No. He always claim it's in the power of the name. And he is able to claim and testify the power of the name of Jesus. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit that led him, that has the rulership of his life. It's the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Even David, in the height of all the tests and the trials and the crisis that he went through, his testimony is the presence of God. In Psalms 139, verse 7, he writes, Whither shall I go? From thy spirit. Or rather shall I flee from thy presence. So the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. And in the time of his grip. Torments because of the effect of transgressing against the law of the Lord. In Psalms 51 verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. My friend. Desire. The person of the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. That you will. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
I tell you the truth. You cannot last a day without the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I cannot continue on ministering unless the Holy Spirit leads me. I cannot do anything unless the Holy Spirit speaks through me. So I desire the presence of God. And that presence is manifested by the Holy Spirit presence in me. I desire that you will desire. As I desired and keep on desiring the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. And then the second truths. So the first truth is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work in unity. And they never antagonize each other. And they never contradict each other. They work as one. The Father and me says, Jesus, we are one. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will testify to our spirit that the Father and the Son are one. And that us, with the Father and the Son, we are one. So to be united, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. So in the second truth, live to excel and edifying the church. Live to excel. Excel means that you are on top. You are A plus student. To excel means that you are not an ordinary man or woman. So in 1 Corinthians 14, 12, glory. Even so ye, for as much as you are zealous for spiritual gifts, Seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. So, Paul is writing to the Christians in Corinth. And notable, in the habit of the Christians in Corinth is that they are so zealous of spiritual gifts. And that is good. But the spiritual gifts that will not be used in the right manner and way, it will be nothing. So, as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. So the right use of the gift. So the gift of preaching that I am performing now. The gift of teaching that I am doing. Is for edifying you. Hallelujah. Because every Christian is member of one church. Because church means ecclesia. Ecclesia means separated ones. O-N-E-S. Separated people. Taken out of the world. Redeemed out of darkness. Forgiven for, from sin. And Jesus put it in the church. Wow. Wow. And the church is the body of Christ of which the head is Jesus. So I am part of the church. I am part of the body. And I always desire to excel in edifying you. Glory. So I'll do my homework. I exercise my prayer habit. I will peruse the pages of the Bible again and again because once you read a part of the Bible the moment you read it you will receive an explanation from the Holy Spirit but the next day that you read it again another revelation 
Because the Word of God is alive. The Word of God is living. That is why it is always adaptable to the need of people, whoever they are, whatever nationalities or race they belong to. The Word of God will complement the need of the people who they who may they be. So, in the name of Jesus, I say, excel in edifying the church. And what is the word edify? It is about giving instruction so that there will be improvement. So, edify is to give instruction so that there will be improvement. So, yes, you are zealous for spiritual gifts, but use the spiritual gifts to bless your fellow brethren, to bless the saints in the church, not for your own use only, not for your own edification only, but for the edification of everyone that God will allow you to be with. Oh, I desire that we shall excel in giving instruction as we live based on that instruction that we are about to share. And then thirdly, live to provoke its other to love. Hebrews 10, 24. In Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So whenever we fellowship with fellow believers. Let our life be a provocation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what is provoke? Provoke is to incite. Another meaning of provoke is to stir up. And another meaning of provoke is to inflame. To incite, to stir up, to inflame. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let us consider one another to incite, to stir up, to inflame. Instead of anger, it has to be love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the last verse, 1 Corinthians 12, in the last verse, Verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet no, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Covet, desire, earnestly. Earnestly means that you desire nothing but what you covet. Hallelujah. The best gifts. And how shall you know the best gifts? There is a more excellent way to know the best gift. And what is that best, that more excellent way? Be in love. So when you are in love with Jesus, when you are in love with the Father, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit for each one of us to love the Father and the Son. So when you love the Father and the Son, you will never neglect to love your neighbor, your enemies, your brothers in Christ. So we will love. And in loving, we shall know. What our gift is. Glory. So now. Provoke. One another to love and. To do good works. To love and to do good works. And to love means. That I have. High regard. To someone whom. I will love. He will be my content in my prayer. The one that I love will be 
in my prayers. The one whom I love will be part of my plan as dictated upon to me by the Holy Spirit. And so, when I am concentrated in the love that God has give, given me, then I will be able to know what will be the work that I am going to do. And that work is tied up with the gift. So when I have the gift, then I will have good works. And preaching is a gift, and to preach is good work. Giving is a gift, and when I give, I am doing good work. So bow down your head and let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful revelation of the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. Bless each one of us as we continue to walk day after day, filled and overflowing with the presence of the Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you thanks. All honor and glory belong to you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So at this topic on the Holy Spirit, and you understand that it is the Holy Spirit that will bring to your heart to believe. Jesus died on the cross, and by his stripes, we were healed. So for you to benefit from that finished work on Calvary, I will pray for uh, the terminal sickness that any person, it may be you or someone you know or someone you love, but believe with me that there will be a mighty work of the Holy Spirit to heal that person. Just close your eyes and I will pray and concentrate on the name and the image of your loved ones or it may be you personally, but I will declare a mighty manifestation of a miraculous mighty working power of the Holy Ghost in the power of the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, precious, powerful name of Jesus and by the finger of the Holy Spirit, I declare a healing for those who are languishing because of terminal cancer, because of terminal sickness. I erase that word terminal and I declare a new health and healing and deliverance to your body right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Father, I give you the glory. Jesus, I give you the honor. Holy Spirit, thank you for thy pleasure. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Greg Durante Ministries is in need of partners and supporters for 2014. We need to be effectively reaching out more souls for the Kingdom of God. And as a thank you gift, as you sow for this ministry of $10, we will give you a book authored by Ken Harrington with the title, Deliverance from Toxic Memory. And for your gift of $25 or more, we will give you three of his books, Designer's Genes, Curse to Blessing, and deliverance from toxic memory. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you a copy of our 2014 Faith Declaration Year of God's Glory. And for your donation of $75 or more, we will give you three books of Ken Harrington, Designer's Gene, Curse to Blessing, Deliverance from Toxic Memories, and one copy of 2014 Faith Declaration Year of God's Glory. Give and invest and you will receive full dividend in your investment. God bless you and may God prosper you without limitation in 2014.
Walang pag-aalinlangan na ikay tatanggap ng kagalingan ng lubang uri ng sakit o karamdaman yan. You may write us at Post Office Box 4135 Manila, Philippines. For your prayer request, call or text us at these numbers. We will pray for you that your problems and needs will be answered by God. You may also visit our website at www.gregdurante.com and like us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We invite you to attend our Sunday service at Biaya ng Diyos Christian Fellowship, 2nd Floor, Medicore Building, Ortigas Avenue, Green Hills, San Juan. It's a great day to live. If you are blessed with this program and have the desire to support Greg Durante Ministries to continue on expanding the reach of our TV broadcast. You may deposit your donations to the following accounts listed on your TV screen. 